already my boots are falling off. I currently cannot breathe. Can he do it, folks? Can he do it? Need to do more yoga. Ugh. Man, this is no joke. Jesse Warden. What up, ladies and gentlemen? Jesse Warden here. We are taking the Versus X to some ATV trails. Now, I've changed coolant on this bike myself twice because I did it wrong the first time. A lot of the instructions are for the Versus 650 and the coolant tank is separate from the radiator. On the Versus X, right there, it's actually attached or hanging on the radiator. I had to detach it and learn how to figure it out. That's okay, it worked. I replaced the fluid, I drained it, I cleaned it. So in theory, it shouldn't overheat. If you know anything about Kawasaki's in general, they run hot and the uh, temperature gauge, which is one now, usually hangs around five. That's when the fan kicks on. I trade the range anxiety with the zero electric bike to heat anxiety <laughs> for the Versus. It's all right. We'll make it work. So yeah, we got some high ray riding about two hours and then we'll turn it to sheets. And you know what I could do? Beyond skipping first gear, lulls, is uh, we could turn it that sheets and just go back to Graves Mountain and hit those fire trails. I don't know, we'll see. We'll figure it out once we get there. We're gonna do a mic check on the highway. I just installed a Cardo Freecom 2 in the helmet. And then I installed external microphone, generic one, for the DJI Osmo Action 4. So they're actually right on top of each other in the front of the helmet here. And I had to turn the gain down. Really, really small. Fuzz on it doesn't have a cat, so I don't think it'll filter out the wind noise. So we're gonna see how this works. I came to get down. I came to get down to jump around. Jump around. Jump! Jump! Yeah, already my boots are falling off. <laughs> I can't tie anything. Eh, that's not gonna go anywhere. Right? I mean, it shouldn't, technically. I've got like two rock straps and a B. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just check it again in sheets. I think it's fine. Hey girls. Hey boys. Superstar DJs. Here we go. Yeah, this one guy isn't doing so hot. And by hot, I mean he is apparently hot. He almost looks on fire. Climbing this mountain. I think there's a house in front of him. Come on, you can do it. I believe in y'all. I flash, I flash, I flash. Oh, well, Virginia DOT, Department of Transportation, has spotted him. However, I currently cannot breathe. It was nice knowing y'all. Maybe I just hold my breath. Ah, but to do that, I gotta stop talking. Why does that guy keep going? He should just, like, give it a break. It's, like, literally gonna catch on fire. Well, that was exciting. Good news. We're rewarded with a uh, gorgeous view at the top of the mountain here. I always love this way, man. Farmlands. Really good mountain views. Super pretty, right? That looks like a horror right there. That guy's a riding it. That's a glider. He takes a horror and it glides on the street. That's a biker right there. Train tracks, they're gonna be bumpy, oh no. You know, they're not that bumpy if you go fast. But no, Hershey plant up here. Anyway, yeah, Hershey's right there. RV park up here, amazing. Now, I don't know much about RV parks. I don't own an RV. I've never, you know, traveled with that camping lifestyle, but this particular one has a beach. And what blew me away around, I guess, 4th of July? was how many they got packed in there. Like I, absolutely amazing driving skills. So imagine like a thousand of those, but like almost touching. And they didn't look permanent. So I was, I was impressed. It looked like a party. Yeah, here it is. So they got all that. And this inlet beach here, 
Because there's RVs over there and there's RVs over here, but the beach is like right here. And it, it, it's literally a beach with a big old lake. Pretty rad. Pretty rad, man. This is the back way, by the way, to the trail. And there are a lot of camping spots that you can just pull over. Some of them you can even park a uh, an RV on. I'm gonna pull over at the midpoint where a lot of people camp and change it into my dirt bike boots. But up here, it turns into, I believe, gravel. But yeah, you see, can you see all the RVs and the tents and whatnot? Some of those might be permanent. And I still have some <laughs> sub tread on my dirt tires. Ooh, losing traction. Wee. Here we go. Okay. So off to the left is the entrance to the trail. I'll put the uh, the road right here on the description. This campsite is where a lot of people go. So I am going to change into my dirt bike boots. Ugh. So I don't have to wear, you know, these things. Just because this thing falls a lot on me. I'm still a noob. Campsite, a lot of people will stay here. And then the next morning they'll take their dirt bikes or dual sports up there. Okay, so before we go, let me show you where we're at on the big levels 4x4 trail. So it shows me facing the trail. It's not true. The trail is actually right there. And this gravel road is coal road. This campsite is right across from the trail. So last time I tried to turn here, it was wet. I crashed. Then when I made it up the hill, I realized this was super aggressive and it's time to go home. And I crashed trying to turn on the trail. <laughs> so we're going to see how much better we can do at this point. So let's... Yeah, I already hate shifting in these. Ugh. Took my sunglasses off so I can actually see. I really should get some goggles, but... The pair I have are for camping, backpacking. Ugh, super rocky! Super rocky! I did not air down. Now these pegs have rubber on them, but I I really haven't had traction problems, whether my boots or this. Probably because it hasn't been muddy or wet enough for me to really, you know, push their traction to the limit. All right, so this is super rocky, and this is where I crashed last time. So I'm not going to make that mistake this time. Take the high road. Lots of dangerous rocks. Even with my T-Rex plate blocking the bottom exhaust. Yeah, that's where I turned around and crashed. It was right up here. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm not ready for this. And to be fair, I'm not ready this time either. But we're going to pick a line and pray. I should have moved my mirrors back. Whoops. Oh, well. Pardon me, butterfly. All right, that's a little too advanced. <laughs> if I had a dirt bike, maybe. Ugh. So I've only seen one campsite on uh, YouTube. I've watched, I don't know, four or five videos. Seen like a couple good views, but they really never did pan around to show you the campsite. So I'll, I'll try to do that for y'all if I make it up there. The sign is, looks like I feel. Lean back. I'm already tired and I haven't started. All right, so we are here. Overconfidence in a super hot bike already. Yeah, the craziest thing happened. My daughter actually asked, the older one, actually asked to go camping again. I'm like, are you nuts? That's awesome. The only problem is it's been super hot, and, you know, she's got her training and school for the summer, and it's just 90-something degrees. I'm like, I'm not hiking in that, man. So, yeah, I was happy to hear that. that she actually wanted to go with Dad before college or wherever she goes. Okay, so that's not too bad. We can just pick a line. Yeah, it's not too bad. But yeah, I can't wait to like, you know, come back to the George Washington Forest and take her somewhere else. I took her to Mount Pleasant. I don't know if you guys have ever done the backpacking or day hiking there. It's only, what, three miles? Okay, that was a bad line. And uh, yeah, you can do... You can do the loop, but I always recommend if you're facing the trail to go right. The left's steep, and it's okay view-wise. has some interesting rock scrambles, but I just I felt like the right way was nicer. I'll put the uh, picture of it in the description, and 
a link to the map and trail of it if you're interested. It's a nice place. This place doesn't mess around when it comes to rocks, dude. Wow. Okay, that looks like a cool campsite. Let's take a look. Keep in mind, I like just got here. So if, if you're like, I'm exhausted, I'm a noob, this is a wonderful place. You see that? And I can already hear my fan kicking on. Wow, that's kind of cool though, man. I mean, those mud puddles, you know, Mosquito Central, but I know they're for dirt bikes, but still, that's cool. Nice fire pit, nice smooth that area. This is very sandy ground. I don't know if the camera shows it. So if you got a tent, um, even with a ground pad, it should be pretty comfortable. And yeah, I'm not seeing any widow makers. So yeah, nice campground. The other nice thing is there's some pine trees. I rarely see that. If you're ever curious, look for a dead branch facing slightly upwards. If you cut it off the tree trunk towards the part that you took off the tree trunk, if it smells like, what's that chemical? I always forget. But yeah, if, you, if it smells like that, then you can baton the wood and it is a wonderful fire starter, even when it's wet. I'll put a link to Coalcracker Bushcraft. He, he talks about fat wood a lot. I've had to use that once when I didn't have any good kindling with me and it was wet. I usually like to bring some with me, but it's nice to be able to find it in a while just in case. Makes you feel comfortable. Gives you confidence. So yeah, these rocks are a little more jagged than Tusker's, Tusker's Gap. There's not as many of them. Okay, I take that back. Wow. Man, this is no joke. Wow. Well, there's my pa paracord, so if I don't find my rock straps, at least I have that to tie stuff, which is good. Let's see if I can pick it up without crashing the bike. Can he do it, folks? Can he do it? Oh, gosh. Ugh. I think he did it. Need to do more yoga. All right, I'm going to let that Marine go ahead of me. I'm going to take a break. I'm a little sad. I can't find my rock straps, man. I'm basically back at the camp. But I did find paracord, so I don't have to wear my boots home. I can just tie them to the, the rack. I'll probably get some water. I feel good, though. It's not too hot today. It's only like 83, 84. That's a kind of nice. Super rocky. And. Oh, that's not good. I uh, brought a chair so I can park her right in the shade over there. On the nice soft ground with all the glass from the drunk campers. Man, listen to that fan. It's cool, man. I dig it here. It's, it's a bit intimidating. This is definitely not beginner stuff, but you know, even these tires still losing tread, they are just the Shinko Adventure Trails. I mean, beyond the, the smooth rocks, I feel really confident in these things, you know? Especially if I stand up. Very impressive. Yeah, so this is the famous spot I see online. It's at least three feet tall. I think I can go around it. If I had a Jeep, I would obviously try this, but not on this guy. Ugh. Yep, okay, we're good. Everyone okay? Okay, <laughs> that was terrifying. Yeah, some of these boulders are like super jagged. I'm nervous to go fast just because the tires, they seem okay. <laughs> if I have a leak on the way home, it's gonna be not a fun time. That, that intimidates me. Let me show you guys this so you can make fun of me. Ugh. Okay, fine. If you don't wanna go there, I don't care. Go here. Okay, so <laughs> this is not too bad, right? These are smooth, you can, as long as you keep your speed up, you're good, but this is super scary. Because you'd have to get a line here, and then left. Yeah, I suppose not too bad, but, whew, that's intimidating. 
All right. I can't miss Deadpool and Wolverine. I'm going to head back. Oh, yeah. No problem. Just, just, you know, coast. No problem. Don't turn left wrong or anything. Oh, ow. Oh, thank God for skid plate. Oh, and cushy, cushy seat. That helps.